Welcome to the Qualies, a subscriber exclusive podcast. Qualies is just a shorthand slang for a qualification round, which is something you do prior to the race, just a little bit quicker. The Qualies podcast features episodes that are short, and we're hoping for less than 10 minutes each, which highlight the best questions, topics, tactics, etc. discussed on previous episodes of The Drive. We recognize many of you as new listeners to the podcast may not have the time to go back and listen to every episode, and those of you who have already listened may have forgotten. So the new episodes of The Qualies are going to be released Tuesday through Friday, and they're going to be published exclusively on our private subscriber-only podcast feed. Now, occasionally, we're going to release Quali episodes in the main feed, which is what you're about to hear now. If you enjoy these episodes, and if you're interested in hearing more, as well as receiving all of the other subscriber-exclusive content, which is growing by the month, you can visit us at peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe. So without further delay, I hope you enjoy today's Quali. I looked into this a few years ago, and maybe the numbers have changed, but directionally, I think this is still correct. Mm -hmm. There were something like nine companies that controlled basically all of CPG, yep. uh, consumer packaged goods. Ten. There's ten. ten. Okay. Ten control 90% of the food. In this yeah. Country. that's best. My calculation was 10 of them controlled 85% of the calories that people consumed. Yep. You face a very uphill battle Indeed. because you're trying to get them to change the way they do business, mm -hmm. but they answer to shareholders, not to you. And the I'm way they're aware. doing things right now is working out reasonably for their shareholders. Not great. These aren't the most high-performing companies in the world. But how in the world, when such a small group of companies control so much, and going back to what you said earlier, yeah. you're asking parents to double their food budget right. to feed their kids correctly and spend twice the time doing it. Right. What does this look like <laughs> in 10 years? How does the story end? Well, I don't know how it ends. This is a battle royal, like tobacco was. And it took a long time to win that. And there are people who say, we haven't even won that one yet. You know, e-cigarettes now come. We have another proposition here in San Francisco tomorrow about uh, tobacco to kids. Here's the deal. The food system needs to change. They're not going to change it from the inside because right now sugar is their business model. It's the thing that increases their sales. When high fructose corn syrup and the dietary guidelines of 1977 were uh, first available. The profit margin of the food industry went from 1% per year to 5% per year. This is their juggernaut. This is their gravy train. They add more sugar, they sell more food, and they know it. And that's why there's sugar in all the food, because when they add it, you buy more for all the reasons we've discussed. They have to change the food, which means they have to change the business model. So how do you change the business model? Well, there are four potential ways to change the business model. One is educate the public so that they don't want that food, in which case then they won't sell it. We're trying to do that. That's one reason I am the chief science officer of a nonprofit, trying to do just that, okay, called Eat Real. And Real is an acronym, Responsible Epicurean and Agricultural Leadership. We are trying to change the food system by praising the good and hoping that that will induce competition amongst restaurants, cafeterias, hospitals, schools to procure, market, and sell real food. Or you can have executive branch efforts like the FDA or the USDA, but not in this administration. If anything, they've rolled back opportunities for that, like the Nutrition Facts label. Or you can have Congress legislate specific changes. They're not doing that because they're all paid off from the American Legislative Exchange Council and other concerns like the Koch brothers, what have you. Or you can have judicial impact. And so there are lawsuits against the food industry going on as we speak in an attempt to try to, shall we say, regulate from the bench, which no one thinks is optimal, but seems to be the only thing that's available at the moment aside from education. So those are the four ways to do this. My goal would be to get rid of food subsidies. Are the food subsidies what enable the junk food to be basically half the price of real food? Or That's is it. it that the real food is twice as much to make? Not independent of the subsidy. It's about the subsidy making junk food cheap. If you got rid of the subsidies, then the market would work. Okay, right now... Any subsidy distorts the market. 
And there's no reason for food subsidies. In fact, there's no economist worth their salt today that believe in food subsidies because they distort the market. So the question is, would food get more expensive if we got rid of all food subsidies? The Giannini Foundation at UC Berkeley engaged in this exercise several years ago, and they computed what would happen to the price of food. And it turned out that the price of food wouldn't change except for two items, corn and sugar would go up. But how would that not impact the cost of all other foods, given how ubiquitous they are? It's a complex modeling, and I'm not, yeah, yeah. I'm not an expert in how they arrived at this. But empirically, this is what fell out of it, is that you know, the price of wheat wouldn't change, the price of uh, soy wouldn't change, mm. only corn and sugar. And that is where the dietary sugar in our food comes from. So I think that that would be a really smart way to start. You know, the farm bill is, you know, reapportioned uh, every five years. And right now there's actually tension around that farm bill. It has to do with other things. But I would like to see the issue of the metabolic cost of food built into the farm bill. Because right now our government has not linked or yoked the productivity and uh, yeah. economic costs of Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security with food. I would like to see that link strengthened because we have the data. Is and there, they is do, there anything, maybe is there anything right now that you consider a victory? Because when you look at the smoking story, you had Surgeon General's report first, right. you had changes in advertising next, right. you had excise taxes, and then ultimately right. environmental changes. We have excise taxes for soda. Do you have any advertising rule changes yet? Well, here in San Francisco, we have a warning label on billboards. That is, right now, uh, there's a temporary injunction about because the food industry uh, But the smoking uh, one that. was interesting. I didn't know this until a few years ago, but basically a law came out that said any time a tobacco commercial was on TV, it had to be followed by an anti-tobacco commercial. Right. It turned out the, the fairness anti doctrine. Yeah, it turned out the anti-tobacco commercials were so popular mm -hmm. and so effective yep. that tobacco voluntarily withdrew from television. Indeed. Is there anything around creating that type of awareness? No. What there is is the question of marketing to children. And the thing is that many of the conglomerates have said they voluntarily will not market to children, at least during certain times of the uh, day when kids are more likely to watch. Mm. But, in fact, watchdogs have been looking at this and they say that it's lip service, that they're not actually doing it. So... You cannot expect the food industry to police itself. I hope you enjoyed today's quali. Now sit tight for that legal disclaimer. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional health care services, including the giving of medical advice. And note, no doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to the podcast is at the user's own risk. The content of this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnoses, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice for any medical condition they have and should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures, the companies I invest in and or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about. <music>